Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict, and I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. Today's video is a tutorial. Yes, I offer you a tutorial today. The hat and scarf combination that you see in the image is called Cambridge Knights, and I broke everything up into pieces for your convenience. So some of you may wanna just make the hat, some of you may just wanna make the scarf. So I separated it so Neither one of you guys would have to sit and wait and watch until your part came up. So just find the one that's appropriate for you. Hopefully this one is the one and watch and enjoy. So the name Cambridge Knights came up through a conversation that I had with Thriss. Uh, Thriss is a content creator here on YouTube. Uh, her channel name is Thriss in Stitches. Feel free to check her out. Her information is in the description box below. Um, she and I were bouncing ideas off back back and forth and she came up with Cambridge Knights and I asked her for her permission to use that name for my project and she said yes so Thriss gets all of the credit for the name thank you Thriss for letting me use that name it's perfect I love it it's great and so yes thank you again Thriss um, so I think without further ado just we're going to jump right into it I hope you enjoy if you have any questions comments or concerns please sound off in the comments below if I don't respond to you feel free to send me an email at hookedcreations123 at gmail.com so without further ado let's jump right into it hi friends so for this tutorial we're going to need some materials which include a pair of scissors a darning needle a six millimeter crochet hook, otherwise known as a USJ, and we're gonna need some yarn. So the particular yarn I'm using for this tutorial and for the actual scarf that we're creating is going to be Big Twist Gentle Yarn. It's 100% anti-pilling acrylic. They classify this as a five weight yarn, but it is very comparable to a four weight yarn. You know how I like to do my comparisons. So um, for this tutorial, this is going to be technically a five weight yarn, but please, by all means, use any four weight yarn you'd like and pair that with a six millimeter crochet hook. So without further ado, let's get started. We're gonna start by creating a slip knot on our hook. And we can do that by placing our thumb on the hook, wrapping around and grabbing the tail and going over the head and then wrapping the head of our hook around the yarn and pulling through and then tensioning on both sides there. So this is how I do it. You can do it however you'd like. Okay, so now what we need to do is chain 26. One, two, three, four, five, okay. Once you have verified that you have 26 chains here, what you need to do is, starting with the second chain from hook, one, two, what we need to do is insert our hook and do a single crochet, just like that. And you wanna continue doing that all the way across for a total of 25 single crochets. Just like that. Okay, once you have verified that you have 25 single crochets here, what you want to do now is chain one and turn your work. Okay, starting with this very first stitch, we want to do a double crochet in that very first stitch. Just like that. And we want to do a double crochet in every stitch going across for a total of 25 double crochets. Just like that. Okay, so row two is completed with 25 double crochets. Okay. So now what we want to do is chain one and turn our work. 
And in this very first stitch right here, okay, what we want to do is we want to input a single crochet. And we want to do a single crochet all the way across. Just like that for a total of 25 single crochets. Okay, so now at the end of row three, we have 25 single crochets across here. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to chain one and turn our work. So for row four, what we're going to do is alternating stitches here. So in the first, very first stitch here, what we're going to do is a double crochet. Just like that. Okay. Now, in the second stitch, two rows down, we're going to do a front post treble crochet. So we're going to wrap around twice. We're going to not, we're going to skip this one and go to the second one. And then just do our triple crochet just like that okay now if you pull this back you'll see the stitch that's in front of it that gets skipped so the next stitch we need to go to is this one which is above the third one right here so we're gonna loop over go in and perform a double crochet just like that and then now we're going to do a front post treble crochet. We're going to skip this one and we're going to go to this one. Just like this. Okay. And then in the next one, we're going to do a double crochet. And if you're not never sure, just make sure you're skipping. So the stitch we're skipping has the treble in front of it. Just like that. So we're just going to place a double crochet right next to that skipped stitch just like that okay and let me just get some yarn here okay and so now we're going to do our front post treble crochet so we need to wrap around twice and remember we have one here so we need to skip this one and we're going to go to this one right here so we're going to go in and around grab our yarn pull through and then go through two Go through two and then go through two just like that okay we're going to continue that all the way down until we get to the end for a total of 25 stitches i'll see you at the end okay so i'm approaching the end here of row four so i just wanted to show that if everything lines up correctly your last stitch should actually be a double crochet in that very last stitch from the previous row and it should look like that we're going to chain one and turn our work just like that now we will have a flat side and we will have a textured side so just giving you some angles here okay so that's what that looks like so far so far we have, just to recap, we have a single crochet row, a double crochet row, single crochet row, and then our alternating row, okay? That's what we have so far. So for row five, what we need to do is we need to do a row of single crochets. So we start with this first stitch, just like that. And we want to do single crochets in every stitch all the way across for a total of 25 stitches. Okay, continue doing this and I will see you at the end. Okay, so I'm at the end, I'm at the end of row five here. So I'm just going to insert my hook for a final single crochet there. I'm going to chain one and turn my work okay 
So now what we're going to do, we're going to do another row of alternating rows. This is kind of what the repeat is. It's going to be a row of single crochets, a row of alternating, a row of singles, a row of alternating. And the alternating pattern is as follows. So first and foremost, we will never um, continue with the front loops. So this will never happen. We will always go in between the loops. So what I mean by is, okay, we have two front post stitches here. We will not carry those stitches going up. We will always go in between, okay? So to do this row here, what we need to do is do a double crochet in the very first stitch of the row, just like that, okay? And now what we need to do is, since there's no stitches to go in between, right? So we're going to do another double crochet, just like that. And it's going to be right above the post from two rows down. It kind of lines up like that. Now we're going to wrap yarn around our needle twice and come down two rows in between these two posts, wrap around, grab your yarn, go through two, go through two, go through two, just like that. We want it to be like an alternating situation going on here. And now the next stitch that we come to, obviously we're skipping the one behind it because we have a stitch right here. So the stitch that's next available is right above the post. So always and forever for the duration of this project, you're always going to put a double crochet above the stitch that had a post in it, okay? And then now after the double crochet, you're gonna come down and do your front post treble again. And you're gonna aim in between the other two posts that are existing still down here, okay? And then now here's a post, we're gonna come up and just insert a double crochet, just like that. If you noticed, there's like a situation happening here where it's a, like a zigzag. That's kind of how you want that to look, okay? Now that the double crochet has been entered there, we're gonna go ahead and place a treble down here, just like that. I will say the yarn is very splitty. <laughs> I should have chosen better yarn. Anyway, moving forward. So we're just gonna continue doing this, 25 stitches until the end of the row, alternating between double crochets and front post trebles, okay? And if you have any issues with this, just rewind me back and replay me, okay? I'll see you at the end. Okay, so I'm at the end here of row six. And so I just wanted to show you something. So I did a front post treble here, and I did um, a double crochet here. Now, one tip is if you start the row with two double crochets before going into your treble, you're going to end the row the same exact way. It's just how the stitches add up. So um, we started the row with two double crochets before going into our post. We're going to end it that way. So here's our post and we have two stitches left. We have the one I just did and then one more here. So it's going to be even all the way through. So let me just get trying to avoid the splitting here. Okay, so there's the two stitches, just like the other side here. Okay. All right, so after every um, row where we go back and forth between these stitches, we do what I like to call a binding row. That's the row of the single crochets. And if you flip, you can actually see the rows here. Single, single, single that actually holds your scarf together um, and keeps it nice and tight, taut. <laughs> so to go to row seven, we're just going to single crochet, turn our work, and we're gonna do a single crochet in all of these stitches, 25 stitches across, starting with the very first stitch right here. Make sure we grab both there. And then 
just do a single crochet like so like that all the way across okay so continue doing that and I will meet you at the end of the row here 25 stitches for row 7 okay so here we are at the end of row 7 and this is the back part this is what this should look like and here's the front part this is what quote unquote the right side all right there's a lot of texture building here and if you notice there's just a lot of zigzagging which is exactly what we want it's actually looking really nice um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how to change colors um, so the way I do it is first I cut a very decent size tail I want to say I don't know that's a good six or seven inches so let's just cut that and move our denim yarn to the side I mentioned splitting, right? That's what this yarn does. <laughs> it's unfortunate. I have a whole bowl of this from the scarf that I made. <laughs> um, but it feels great, which is why I use it. <laughs> okay. So here's the new yarn. We're using the quote unquote charcoal. Um, so what I do is I, I'm going to pull out the last stitch just like that. And I'm going to insert my hook back in, like so. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grab, I'm going to go in and grab the yarn, just like that. Now I'm going to grab this new yarn, go over the head of the hook, and pull through, just like that. And making sure I don't pull the wrong side, I'm going to grab the working yarn and just chain. Now I'm going to flip it over. Now what I want to, I will want to get my hands on the two tails. So here are the two tails. We're splitting. Um, and I want to do some knotting up here. So we're going to just do that. Not too tight, but taut. Do it a second time for good measure. And the second time is when I, t I pull tight. Okay. We'll sew them in later. Okay. And I always recommend changing colors after your binding row of single crochets. It's just, it looks better in my opinion. So we've already chained one. It's a tight chain one. Um, so I like to just do one for good measure. And we're going to come back around. Let's move this yarn out of the way here. Okay, now let's take a look. So we have a front post treble right here, which means when we work, we have a binding row here, so it's an alternating row. So now I need to put a front post treble here because it's what comes next in the, uh, the pattern because I have one down here. So I have one here, and now I'm going to put one here. So it goes back and forth like a zigzag. So... What we need to do now is put a double crochet in the very first stitch of the row. Just like that. Okay. And so now what we want to do is wrap around twice, come down two rows, go around the double crochet, and perform a treble crochet. Just like that. And then right above the post here, we're going to insert our hook after we wrap around for a double crochet. So just like the previous rows where we're going back and forth between a double and a front post treble, just like this. And this is kind of what it, it needs to look like. Okay, and if you turn, you see how each one, each uh, front post treble has the skipped stitch in the back. Okay, it's very easy. Like, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's mindless. You can just keep going. The only time you really need to stop is when you're changing colors, if you even decide to change colors, because it looks amazing all in one color as well. Um... 
yeah. So technically, it is a three row repeat, um, but in the very beginning, you have to build, you have to build your foundation by um, doing the single crochet and then a whole row of doubles, which really isn't a part of the repeat um, because the repeat honestly is, um, you know, you have your front post row and then your binding row and then your opposite um, variation row here. So it goes um, zigzag back and forth like that. So however you consider it, I mean, like I said, once you have your foundation built and you, you build your, your pattern here, it's literally mindless. You can go on and on and on forever for it, for as long as you want it to go. And so I'm just going to complete this row here. Treble and then double. Once you get the hang of it, you'll know exactly where to put your, your hook. Just like that. You just follow the, the front post treble up and that's where you're going to put the double at. And yeah, so let me just finish the row I'm almost here. <laughs> okay, see how there was a front post treble down here? That means I'm going to need to put one up here. That. and then there's the skip stitch and then the one that I'm finishing the row with so and I always like to check my work so now that I've ended with the the one stitch after the other end should look like that as well so it's one stitch this doesn't count so it's one double and then the post and then it should be the post then the double and that's how that should look okay so let's go ahead and do a binding row. We're going to chain one, turn our work, and then go into that very first stitch with a single crochet and do 25 single crochets all the way across. Just like that. It should look like that. Okay. I'll see you at the end of this row. Okay. I'm at the end of the row. So I'm putting my last single crochet in, just like that. I'm going to chain one, turn my work. It's looking so nice. Okay, so for the duration of this project, for as long as you want your scarf, um, you're going to continue this whole pattern. Nothing about this changes. It's one row of single crochets as a binding row to hold your stitches together and then one row of variating stitches here between a single, I mean, I'm sorry, a double crochet and a front post treble. And that's kind of how that's going to look all the way through. And I'm going to show you what the completed project looks like. Let me just back up the camera a little bit. Okay. My apologies in advance for the noise very close okay so once you go on and on and on and on and on um, this was the beginning here or was it no this was the beginning so this was the beginning this was this is the wrong side the flat side is called the wrong side this is the right side here so let me turn this around this is what it's going to look like after you build your rows Okay, and let's get the tape measure. So it is measuring eight inches. So eight inches wide, 25 stitches. And I made this extra long for me. It's seven and a half feet long, but I don't think that everyone should have to make their scarves seven and a half feet long. Um, so the amount of yarn that you're actually going to need will vary depending on how long you're going to want it. 
most scarves are six feet in length, in which case you're going to need um, around 700 yards to, to do this, which would equate to two skeins of Red Heart Super Saver on average with some leftover. Um, you can use whatever four-weight yarn you'd like. Just know that um, if you follow my recommendations with using a six millimeter crochet hook and you're using a four weight yarn or a very thin five weight yarn, you're going to need about 700 yards to complete the project. And yeah, just want to make sure that when you're changing your rows, um, you're changing your colors, that you're doing it consistently. So if you wait until um, your binding row to change your color, um, make sure that every time you do that, you're doing it the same way, just for consistency. Um, but isn't this pattern great? It looks so nice. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to um, sew in the ends really quick. I try to do that in every video. Um, let me just cut this off here. This was just a little swatch to get you guys started. At the very end, when you're done, I do two chains and then I cut off a tail, a couple inches long, pop the hook off like that. And then I take and I squeeze the yarn from above the chains and I just slide it down like this. And what happens is it creates like a double knot right there. And then I will take my darning needle and sew in my end. Just like that. And when I sew in my ends, guys, I mean, everyone should try and get in between the fibers. It will actually hold a lot better if you do that. Going in between um, the stitches and not the fibers, you're more than likely to see your tails fly back out in due time. Just like that. We're going to go back over one more time. Great. Okay. All right, so now what we need to do is just take my holly scissors here. Gone. You don't even know what happened to it. So that's how you do that. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will eventually read them all. I have a habit of doing that. And uh, yeah, so until the next one, guys, uh, take care. I hope you enjoyed this. Oh, and by the way, please, if you enjoyed this content, hit like, subscribe to my channel, and turn the notifications on so you're aware of when my next tutorials will drop. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.